Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and in this week's video, we want to shine the spotlight on a morph called Phantom. Now the Phantom gene in reticulated pythons offers a really unique one-two punch that gives you not only the looks of the gene in its incomplete dominant form, or like a single layer of the gene, but it also doubles up for really spectacular results as a homozygous animal. Now, depending on your perspective, and my perspective might be different than a lot of yours, there's a lot of different ways that you can take this project. Now, my personal viewpoint on the future of the Phantom Gene and all the projects that you can do with it is that the further we refine it into small genetics, the greater the audience that will be able to enjoy it. With a female like this, at two years old, this sub-adult female is basically the size of a corn snake now, and she doesn't have a whole ton of growing left to do. Granted, she'll be a little bit bigger, but probably never outgrow the average dedicated keeper of Superdorf reticulated pythons. So this is one direction that you can really take the phantom gene and I'm going to show you some projects that are like every step along the way where we've been doing exactly that for many years now. Now the other direction that many more people take the project is by using the phantom's unique traits and what it does to color and pattern and blending it into a bunch of different mutations to come up with complicated and beautiful morph combos. Now we've actually been developing this project in both directions and I would love to hear in the comment section from you guys what your favorite phantom combo from this video actually is. Now until this year phantom was almost never available above the 50% Superdorf mark. Now this girl is two years old but she's literally the only female of this percentage until this year's crop of babies came out. So it's pretty exciting in the year 2020 what we're able to do now with the Superdorf market. Before we get into all the different directions that we take this project, let me show you exactly what it does on this single gene animal. Okay, so the Phantom actually impacts not only the color, but the pattern as well. What I really like about it is the subtle ways that it changes both. As far as pattern goes, the pattern is reduced slightly, somewhat like the platinum gene, but it has much more of a blended wash versus the pixelated look of, say, a platinum does. The, a lot of the locality influences show through, and here you can see a lot of the Madu and Kalatoa influences in the large white side rosettes and the way the pattern is pulled up on the back, as well as that super dwarf classic influence with the jagged, angular, tail pattern. This mutation in reticulated pythons is very similar to say a lesser ball python where it brightens the overall appearance, gives it a good wash of color, and then it really does some pretty fantastic work with different allelic traits. Now when you have different morph options that are located on the same allele or the same spot in that animal's DNA, sometimes they mix together with really spectacular results. So, a phantom bred to a phantom in its super form makes a blue eye leucistic, similar to this animal. Now obviously, you look at this and you think, well, gee Garrett, that is a blue eye leucistic. It's all white and it's got blue eyes. But actually, this is an allelic combo that happens when you breed a phantom to another morph called an orange ghost, which makes this known in the marketplace as a cow. What's happening with this animal is even though it hatched looking just like many other blue eye leucistics does, this cow animal, because of the mixing of that orange ghost stripe, it morph on the same allele as phantom, will undergo a change in color and pattern as it grows. You can actually see up close this thing starting to develop some very small spots with every day that goes by, more and more color becomes infused on this animal until, as an adult, it'll have potentially as much black as it has white on its body and end up looking something like a Jersey cow, which is where they got their common name. 
In the Super Phantoms, you get a solid, stark white animal with no color on it whatsoever, and those gorgeous, light blue, almost platinum silver eyes. However, when the orange ghost stripe is mixed onto that same allele making a cow, you'll begin to see little spots, little speckles, develop on top of this white snake. And if you look really closely, you can actually see remnants of yellow pattern. And there is actually a, a reticulated python pattern, though it is a little bit more striped, kind of embedded in the white of that animal. It's a very exciting genetic mutation to finally be able to introduce into some super dwarf genetics and begin to manage that third dimension of selective breeding, which is the size in these animals so that more and more people will one day be able to enjoy something that looks like this from their very own home. Now, when we, once we started actually developing this gene and blending it into some of the other morphs and combos, uh, it's really amazing all the different twists and turns that that phantom can take. So take, for example, these two sisters from the same clutch. This is why I love breeding locality animals in. This is a phantom tiger. Now, the tiger typically stripes everything out, but tigers in high percentage super dwarves like this girl is, really fight with that locality influence. So if you look at her pattern there, you can tell she's a tiger, but it's it's just infused with heavy doses of Kalatoa and Super Dwarf influence, and then that amazing phantom tiger tail that I'm sure you're gonna see a whole bunch of in this video. Now, if we take a look at this girl's sister from the exact same clutch, you're gonna see the difference that the influences fighting between that locality, the tiger gene, and the phantom, and you get to kind of see different characters win, if you will, in different animals. This is the kind of stuff that really allows for awesome selective breeding opportunities. This is again, the same morph from the same clutch, everything identical, but look at how different these two sisters came out. Now, whereas this one, the phantom is having less of an influence on the color, leaving the animal still with a lot of contrast, and really intense, very busy, high saddle count that we find in our Superdorf localities. This one, by contrast, the Phantom has absolutely taken over and teamed up with the Tiger to wash out any kind of locality influence other than size. I don't know about you guys, but when I look at these two animals, it's really hard to decide which one I like. I think I might take an animal like this and try to add it to something like the Sunfire gene to really bring the color and clean this out where I may take an animal like this and breed it into some really funky high percentage or pure Superdorf bloodlines to continue chasing and perfecting these two different looks and just see over the generations how far we can get those same genetic traits to deviate from one another. So taking that same morph, this is what it actually looks like when you do add Sunfire to the Phantom Tiger. The Sunfire comes in like the Phantom does and begins to blend the colors together, removing any of the harsh lines, leaving behind this really delicate, just sort of faded pastel coloration. You can see that sunfire orange cropping up from underneath. The tiger pattern still coming through on top of that, the striping and cleanness that that phantom actually provides. Now I mentioned that that was a head anery, let me show you what probably is my new favorite anery morph. Those of you guys who've been watching the channel long, you know that I love anneries. An anery is going to delete all the red pigment from an animal. And with the phantom being a very brownish red animal to start with, when you anery that sucker, oh my goodness, they just get the most amazing subdued, blue and greenish tone. Anneries really take off after they hit about maybe a year and a half, two years old as far as color goes because they go through a, a change where they actually get brighter as they grow. So I'm really excited to see how these phantom anneries turn out in time. So again, this is just a straight phantom, though it does have a lot of super dwarf influence on it, with that anery color shift makes for a pretty amazing animal, I think.
Now if we pull the tiger out of it, you can really see Phantom and Sunfire together, both adding those, you know, with the, the Phantom cleaning and kind of purifying the background color, removing any speckling, really cleaning it up, and Sunfire doing the same thing while adding a light orange color. The Sun Phantoms really are pretty spectacular. But I think having those animals with the Sunfire and the Phantom together, adding tons and tons of red and orange pigments, and then the Anery Gene simultaneously removing them, you get this animal that just looks like a, a ghost. It's like a hypo anery look. It's super clean, very blue, still has tons of contrast. It's not quite as washed out and faded as the tigers are. So it, it adds, you know, nearly black pattern with an almost white dorsal pattern and this, I don't even know how to describe it, like a, a moonlight blue background. I mean, these things are just, I don't know, I, could, I never could have imagined how nice the Phantom Sun Anneries turned out. It's definitely a next level animal for sure. I love it. All right, so one of the projects that we're doing here that should be hatching in about a week's time is trying to add some of that cool Phantom influence because of the, the red backgrounds and color and contrast into another dwarf or super dwarf. I mean, I don't know. These guys kind of ride the lines. Uh, locality. We'll, we'll do the, uh, how about we do the under promise over deliver thing and call Tom Belongins a dwarf and not a super dwarf. This is a very tiny, probably the least known dwarf and super dwarf locality, which is Tom Belongin. And it's a tiny little island right off of Slayer, which is right off of Sulawesi. This is a different subspecies than the super dwarf localities and what this subspecies brings to the table are intense yellow heads rich blacks crazy pattern and contrast so you'll have to tune back in in a little bit to see how a phantom tomba longin locality cross looks i think it's going to be something really special and add a lot of color and contrast to an already spectacular bloodline of dwarf and super dwarf phantoms phantoms Tom Belong. Maybe we'll call them Fan Toms. What do you guys think? So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Garrett, these snakes are genetically stacked. And you can be stacked too if you call my buddy Blake over at Stuart Design. He has set me up with so much awesome swag with the new logo that he designed. And you can actually watch that video here. Here. No, I think it is here. Anyways. Blake has got your back when it comes to all of your marketing needs. I mean, I don't know if you can even look at some of this stuff. We've got hoodies, stickers, shirts. I've got shirts for the ladies. We've got regular business cards, snazzy metal ones. This is just a sticker I put on somebody else's water logo, water bottle with my logo on it. But that's still cool. We've got hats, we've got stickers, we've got magnets, we've got shot glasses. You can a coffee cup, you can have a have a drink on me. Look how nice that coffee muck is. I mean, it's gonna make you wanna take your old logo and smash it. Garrett! <laughs> hey, I stuck the point. Let me show you an alternate direction aside from blending into all of these different combos and unique localities that you can take this project. Okay, so aside from continually introducing new genetic traits, another thing, probably my favorite thing to do with any single gene morph is just keep perfecting it with the Superdorf bloodlines. I mean, obviously dwarf and super dwarves are what we do here, and it really is fun to kind of take one genetic mutation and play on the palette of all the different locality options that we're fortunate enough to work with. And this is one such animal. So I told you that until 2020, you really couldn't get any super dwarf phantoms over 50%, and even then they were fairly rare. And then this year we it, were able to increase a few. But this animal here is a really spectacular one um, that was the result of 
three generations, starting with a small phantom reticulated python male, and then breeding three times to pure Superdorf female localities. The first generation, this was bred to a Kalatoa to make a 50% Superdorf phantom. One of those ma baby males was raised and then bred to a pure Madu female to make a 75% Superdorf phantom. And finally, that 75% Superdorf phantom male was bred to a pure Kiowati female to make this 87.5% Superdorf phantom. This animal, though it has that phantom genetic mutation, really only has 12.5% mainland left in it. All the rest of its bloodline come from the diversity of three generations of island mamas, just contributing to smaller and smaller sizes. And this, I think, is going to be the key to the future of the phantoms. Really small, rat snake to ball python sized, reticulated pythons, capable of everything that we've just seen in that phantom genetic complex and more. I'm looking forward to the future. I hope you guys will be right here with me when it happens. Thank you again for joining us for this phantom episode, and we will catch you next time. Thank you.